shoot. Okay, I'm gonna give everyone a couple seconds to hop back on. I was on my phone and it literally just like shut the app down. So I don't know what happened there. So I'm just gonna give everyone a couple minutes to hop back on. Now I'm on my computer. Hopefully this works and it does not shut down. Hi, Brianna. <laughs> I can't believe it just closed on me. Okay, so I'm going to give everyone a couple minutes to join us again, and then we'll keep going. <laughs> I don't know what happened. My app just closed on me, just shut down in the middle of what I was saying. All right, so hopefully everyone else can hop back on with us, and let's keep going. Okay, so what was I saying? All right, so the the case or the reason behind this. So the wounded feminine and the false masculine. So what's going on with the weakness thing? Um, there's a fear that I'm going to be rejected because I'm not good enough. There is something fundamentally wrong with me. And so I need to control everything because the wounded feminine doesn't feel safe. And so she doesn't trust, right? So what happens is that she loses out on the most incredible parts of being human and feeling fully alive. When she's stuck in the false masculine because of the unhealed feminine wound, she doesn't have access to things like being truly truly seen, being truly supported, being truly loved for all of who she is and who she is because she's not letting anyone really see her. And she doesn't have access to truly loving and accepting herself. And that's huge because it always starts with us loving and accepting ourselves right? Because the fear is I'm not good enough, right? So that has to be changed. She doesn't, access, she doesn't have access to like the pleasure, right? Because of the worthiness issue here in the richness and the joy of living and in her body and her senses. And she doesn't have access to just like take that deep breath and just let go and trust like with arms open. Like I just, I just trust. I feel so safe. That is not something that she's got going for her right now. And so what happens is that she self-sabotages because I don't deserve this or even I can't have this. Remember that the, the fairy tale princess wasn't rescued. Love isn't real, right? In relationships, in friendships, in business, in money, in health, in lifestyle, there's this whole thing about not feeling like she deserves. So what happens? She works really hard. She tries to provide for herself. She burns herself out. She feels exhausted and she doesn't have access to another way of being. And it just does not have to be this way. There is a way out, which is what I said before. There is a way out. So the wounded feminine is the one who says, yes, I want to work with you. Yes, I want to book a call with you. Yes, I want the link to pay you. And then here's the price and freaks out. And then she ghosts or she cuts off communication. Why does this happen? Because her wound is around trust and deserving. She doesn't trust the person. Why? Because she doesn't trust herself. And if I can't trust myself, how can I trust you? Her wound is around deserving. She doesn't think she's worth that money. She doesn't think she's worth that investment. She's only worth where she currently is, right? She can't spend outside of that comfort zone because that would be the death of her old story and who she thought she was and what she thought she was worth. And this would force the false masculine shell to begin to crack, like cracks in that armor. Because it's all about being rational and practical and logical. And transformation is about the unknown. It can't be calculated, it can't be understood. It's about investing in what is unseen and not yet experienced. Right? It's about trust and deserving, right? And you trust because you know that you deserve. So this is the same as what happens when she starts to get involved with a man. She sees red flags that aren't real. She feels off. She gets scared and she runs. And it's not because of him. It's because of her unhealed wounds. And from her paradigm, she doesn't have access to knowing when it's safe to trust and when it isn't. And she doesn't have access to feeling deserving of a great guy. So she'll do the same thing with money. She won't charge her worth. She'll have weak boundaries. She'll not keep her deadline. She'll self-sabotage. She won't ask for more, right? Because she's afraid of not deserving more because she's not enough, right? 
and we could go through all the different areas of your lives where this shows up because it shows up everywhere. So there's a whole nother world possible for you. There's a world where you can feel safe, safe to be fully seen, safe to be fully supported, safe to be fully loved, safe to be deserving, safe to be yourself without the persona and the walls and the protection, safe in life, safe in the world, safe with yourself, safe with a man. But what has to happen is that these core wounds and the love blueprint imprinting and coding has to be rewired. And this is the work I do with you. You don't have to, you, you don't have to know, you might want to know uh, about my love blueprint work. And I have a video explaining that you can go find it, but it's the basis of what you attract in love, but also this manifests in the rest of your life. And the foundation of uh, the relationship that you're going to build, the kind of man you're going to be attracted to and call in, the kind of relationship that you'll have with them, it's made up of all these previous experiences going all the way back to childhood and then further imprinted by our life experiences. And in there, and the wounding and the false coding is imprinted. That's in the love blueprint. So it's there that we have to go on a hunt and find the coding, find the parts that need healing and updating, find the blocks and recoding. Clearing the past, healing the past, rewiring how you operate, that's the first step. And I've talked about this before, it is only the first step. So once you've done that, this is where we have to go first because it can't bring anything else in and an already full blueprint, right? So I have a unique method that literally gives clients breakthroughs on major patterns in every single call. And it's extremely powerful transformational work. The second step that we do then is creating something new on the blank slate or actually rediscovering who you really are. Because if you've got that feminine essence, it's just it's just hidden, it's buried, it's lost under all this other stuff. And so through my methods that will literally blow your mind, we rewire everything for you. So the wounded feminine needs more than affirmations, more than breath work, more than rituals, more than band-aid approaches that are typically given. Because this is imprinting and encoding at the level of the nervous system, of brain patterning, of the shadow holding parts of us. So I do invite you to book a call with me so we can discuss working together. I invite you to tell your masculine protection that you are safe to expand. You are safe to, and deserving of support. You are deserving of love and happiness and ease. And do this for your inner feminine child. Not backing off, not closing off a world of being, a world of transformation, a world of possibility and openness to love and feeling good. And the most important part, feeling safe in your own skin, literally. So I can lead you through your fear because it's the same thing I've gone through. I can help you work with your wounded feminine so that she is safe and will always be safe. This investment is the point of her healing and her transformation. Trusting both yourself and trusting me, that is the point of transformation and healing for the wounded feminine, that inner child. That's where it begins. And it's normal to be scared when we are leaving an old paradigm because you cannot imagine what's beyond it. You can't imagine what you will gain, but you can see what you'll, you think you might lose, right? Or what you're leaving behind. It's normal to be freaked out a bit. It's normal to worry, but what will this person or that person think when I do this? But that's also the wounded feminine speaking who doesn't feel safe or okay with herself, right? So the step to healing this, the first step is to book a call, right? And then we're going to, we're going to work with that fear. We're going to be like, no fear, not today. You don't get to make decisions for me today because that part will be talking about all its worries and its fears and you can't afford it. It's irresponsible. What will others think? You can't trust. You're not safe. And then you just get to say no, no, thank you. And make the leap anyways, knowing that we are safe and we are protected and we are guided to the right next step always. And not allowing ourselves to raise our worth or and allowing ourselves to raise our worth and our deservingness, right? This is the step. Saying, I'm the kind of a woman who invests a lot in myself because I'm worth a lot. And my back is always held and is always safe no matter what. So just breathe really deeply. Just repeat after me. It is safe to expand. And actually type that in the comments. It is safe to expand. It is safe to grow. I am safe and I'm supported. Just type that. 
we start to change right here, right now. So I'm gonna go through and read your comments. Unfortunately, I can't read the old comments on my last slide, but I will go back through and I will comment on them. But let me just see what you guys have got going and let me know if you have any thoughts or questions coming up right now. Okay, yeah, can you manifest? Yes, Sarah, it can manifest as anxiety. Absolutely, right? Because that's about control. And we talked about how control is a big part of how this shows up. And lack of self-care that has to do with deservingness and self-worth. Yeah, it's safe to expand, it's safe to grow, I'm safe and I'm supported. So write that in the comments right now, claim that for yourself. Yeah, I'm loving these comments coming in. Beautiful, beautiful. You are safe. And just take that breath. All right, so it looks like there are no questions coming up, but you should message me if you wanna book a call. And remember, that's the fear talking. If you're like, oh my God, but no, I can't do that. That is the fear talking. That is all it is. It just does not know that you are safe. So yeah, send me a message and we can get on a call. Oh, I love this. I love seeing my, <laughs> my feet flooded with this. It's safe. It is safe to expand. It's safe to grow. I feel supported. The first thing, so Sarah says, what if the first thing you remember is trauma? Um then I would still assume, Sarah, that you probably are a feminine essence. Um, that's something we could talk about if you message me and you want to get on a call. Obviously, I would need to, to feel in. But typically, if there's been trauma, then I can almost guarantee you that you've got a feminine essence, that the trauma is what created that the false masculine, as they call it. Does desperation have uh, to a relationship relate to this? So Lisa... Um, yes, absolutely, but this might actually be a different form of the wounded feminine that I have not done a live on that would map more onto anxious attachment. Um, and we can talk about that aspect of the wounded feminine um, as well. That would be a slightly different manifestation because in, in this wounded feminine who has the false masculine, right, that's, that those two things go together, um, you would probably, the, the desperation, yes, it could totally be there. I would feel that way, but at the same time, there's so many walls. That's the, that would be the pairing that you would see. Okay, so if there are no other questions, then I am going to sign off. But just repeat that for yourself. And I am here. I love you so much. You are beautiful. You are radiant. And you are so, so worthy and deserving. <laughs> so much love. Bye.